What comes to mind when you think of great trilogies in history? Maybe you think of the original Star Wars trilogy, or Lord of the Rings, or in gaming, The Witcher, or the original Mass Effect trilogy. Something that likely doesn't come to mind is a trilogy involving Minecraft. However, as of a few weeks ago, that all changed. I have been waiting for this for a long time, and now the greatest old Minecraft mod trilogy has finally been fully released. I am talking about Legacy Plus, a series of three of the most comprehensive and unbelievably detailed old Minecraft mods ever made. And when I say old, I don't mean the normal Golden Age era modding of Alpha and Beta Minecraft, no, Legacy Plus features mods for the earliest versions of Minecraft, Classic, InDev, and InfDev respectively. Now that's what makes these mods so special. Most of the Golden Age community is so focused on Alpha and Beta that these old versions often get lost in memory. However, the Legacy Plus mod team comprised of 12 people has brought them back into the spotlight. And I can safely say that for each of those three version eras of Minecraft, Legacy Plus will likely be the most extensive modifications to those old versions for the rest of forever. Don't believe me? Well, let's go through each of the mods in the trilogy. Classic Plus, InDev Plus, and InfDev Plus. And I promise you, you will be on my side at the end of the video. Let's start with Classic Plus, which is obviously a mod for Minecraft Classic, specifically Classic version 0.30. So given that these mods have a ridiculous amount of changes and features, we won't go through all of them to avoid a six hour long video, but in the description I've linked a couple documents and the website that details the features in all of them. You can also join the Legacy Plus Discord to see all mod information and change logs. Anyway, Classic Plus completely revitalizes Minecraft Classic Classic to make it an extensive experience. For starters, Vanilla Classic is usually remembered as the original creative mode, but Classic Plus adds three new game modes. Let's start with Survival. You may remember Minecraft's Survival Test, which was the brief couple versions where Notch tested out combat and slow block breaking and the first versions of the inventory. Classic Plus Survival is similar to that, but features many improvements to Survival Test to give it a more polished feel. For example, working armor dropped by armored mobs, different difficulties including hardcore mode, and a point system similar to experience to buy various power-ups, which are similar to modern vanilla Minecraft enchantments or potion effects. Some power-ups include speed, regeneration, mining haste, and silk touch. There are also a few new mobs to find. Bunnies and slimes have been reintroduced to Classic, and there is a secret boss mob that I won't spoil how to find. Also, the inventory and crafting systems in Classic Plus are entirely custom. You can get a quote unquote crafter by pressing C with four planks in your inventory, then placing it, then, and this is really cool, you craft things by placing the combinations of blocks on top of the crafter. For example, wool and a flower placed on top will give you colored wool. So the next game mode is Arcade. It's a mob wave mini game where mobs spawn in five minute waves that get progressively more difficult as time goes on. Between each wave, there is a three minute grace period to stock back up on resources and prepare for the next wave. It's a super fun way to take a break from normal Minecraft mechanics and it's fun to try and beat your own high scores. And lastly, spectator mode is added, which can be accessed via commands or when you die in arcade mode or hardcore survival. Pretty self-explanatory there. As far as creative mode goes, there are quite a few improvements from Vanilla Classic as well. If you didn't know, flying didn't exist, so Classic Plus adds an easy flying system. There are single player commands built in recognizable things like slash give and slash game mode and also world edit like ones like slash fill. And one of the most fun things to use in creative is the explosive arrow feature by pressing tab, which launches projectile explosives to quickly clear terrain or the bio nuke, which kills all living entities in the level. So moving on to spice things up, there are different world generation types to choose from if you're so inclined. Things like island, desert, forest, or wasteland types. And furthermore, in the world generation realm, you can choose your world size from tiny 64 by 64 to ginormous 1024 by 1024. 
Classic Plus also has over 100 new blocks, from decoration blocks like cedar wood, cherry wood, and moss, and candles, to more utility items like lava sponges, jump pads, and barrels, which are like little shulker boxes. A full list can be found on the Classic Plus features document in the description. The final thing I'll talk about is the changes to Classic Multiplayer. Vanilla Classic 0.30 Multiplayer exists and works to this day, but from a server side perspective is extremely limited and basic. Classic Plus adds many commands we take for granted today back into the game, and also features survival multiplayer functionality. Not only that, but some server quality of life functions are implemented, such as spawn protection, working server authentication, muting players, and different colored names for server ops. If you can believe it, I am just scratching the surface of the mod here, so if you're looking to relive the old days of classic with some quality of life upgrades, or try out a new form of Minecraft altogether, give Classic Plus a try and see how much it has to offer. It is truly mind-blowing, honestly. If you thought Classic Plus looks crazy and extensive, buckle in for Indev Plus, the second installment of the trilogy. Get ready for the destruction of boring vanilla Minecraft Steve, because at the beginning you create a character, and your character determines a few things about how the game will go. You can choose game rule type things like keep inventory and difficulty. Each character can have their own custom skin, up to five characters in total. Now, characters keep their progress and inventories across the game. So if you have two worlds with one character, you can switch between them, bringing all items over to the other world. It's important to note though that this only works if the second world matches the rules you set for the character. So if you have a creative only character, they cannot join a survival world. This is a super neat way to spice things up as say you need some wood in a desert dominated world, you can transfer materials that way, or create any number of rules and restrictions for yourself for fun. And similar to Classic Plus, Indev Plus features three game modes, Creative, Survival, and Hardcore, all of which are self-explanatory. As far as world type goes, the mod expands on it drastically from Classic Plus, featuring an extensive world type list with subsequent world themes to go along with it. So like a floating world type combined with a shroom land theme gives floating mushroom islands, for example. Super fun to mess around with the combinations. There are 30 day long season cycles, each with their own unique features, weather, and environmental factors. For example, in winter, crop growing times are longer and days are shorter. Each season has its own custom weather added as well. Summer is the only time you can experience a thunderstorm. In autumn, there is wind, which causes really cool effects like blowing projectiles and dropped items around. Winter has a foggy effect that reduces visibility, making the season even more difficult to endure. Rain can happen in spring as well as summer and autumn, but obviously winter means snow. And also there are custom weather changes depending on the world type. So there are sandstorms in desert worlds, ash fall in blood rain and hell worlds, which blood rain is crazy by the way. It damages the player and all passive mobs unless you have a special ring equipped to protect yourself from it. So let's talk about some of the things that make Indev Plus incredibly difficult because my gosh, unless you tailor it specifically to be easy, it is difficult. Throughout the game, assuming you aren't on peaceful mode, there is a 10% chance for a blood moon to occur at night. During a blood moon, mob spawn rates are increased. More of those mobs will be armored and literal giants will spawn. Which yeah, if you didn't know, giants or zombie models scaled up times 100 were actually in the vanilla game for a very long time. They were obviously never implemented, but you could spawn them in with commands. Indev Plus brings giants into the game during these blood moons. They are tough, but if you manage to defeat one, you can get adminium which is the most powerful custom resource in the game, required for all late game items. Which speaking of custom resources, there are dozens of new blocks, items, and tools. Like literally over 100 new things. From charms, to new weapon types, to new ore, to quivers. Some are modern Minecraft things brought back into Indev. We don't have nearly enough time to go through all of them, but I'll show off some of the notable ones. Firstly, cogs, aka the original redstone notch created way back when, are made fully functional. 
You can use generators, which are the equivalent to redstone blocks or torches, transformers, which are like repeaters, and other things to make functional circuits and power. The cool thing is too, cogs can work vertically. So no need to make those wonky looking redstone builds to get power upward, cogs just do it automatically. There are two new ores in the game. One is emerald, which doesn't function as normal emeralds in today's Minecraft. It is used to create tools and armor that are in between iron and diamond tier in terms of durability, with the catch that emerald is required to mine diamonds, not iron. Adminium is the other new ore, and this doesn't have tools or armor associated with it, but it is used to craft super powerful items such as Hellfire Arrows or the Adminium Shield, or one of my favorite items in the mod, Adminium Chess. These chests function similar to Ender Chests, but instead of holding items between dimensions, it holds the items per character. So going back to what I said earlier about characters being able to switch worlds and having their own rules, the Adminium chests are a way to store items across each character's worlds. So say your survival character has two worlds, you can access the same Adminium chest contents in both of those worlds. Just such a cool idea. And one of my favorite special pieces of armor are the Skyrunner's boots, which increases speed, jump height, and allows you to glide. It feels weird to have such whimsical powers in a very buggy, choppy, ancient version like InDev, but it works so well and I love it. And that's just scratching the surface. There are tons more things, obviously. From new types of wood to an insane amount of decoration blocks, lanterns, and flowers. The full list of new items can be found on a public InDev Google Doc I've linked below. What's cool too is there's a recipe book system, but it doesn't hold your hand too much. You have to craft the items first to unlock and see the recipes to preserve the discovery aspect. Now, moving on to mobs. Back in vanilla indev, there were the classic zombies, skeletons, spiders, and creepers as hostile mobs, and pigs and sheep as the sole passive mobs. Indev Plus adds so many new mobs, like bringing cows back into this version. It also adds ducks, which are just so cute. There are tons of world type specific mobs, like in the desert world type, there are ant lions and mummies, which are like modern Minecraft husks. Or in floating worlds, there are harpies that are like gas, but shoot feathers. These harpy feathers can be used to make the Skyrunner boots I mentioned a bit ago. The seas come to life with the addition of fish and jellyfish, which sting the player if you touch them. There are a few more new mobs that I'll leave you to discover for yourself. And speaking of discovering for yourself, there are 50 achievements and 34 difficult challenges to complete, each with their own requirements and twists. What's cool about them is they serve as almost a pseudo tutorial, teaching you things about the mod as you progress. And lastly, the mod comes with a ton of different quality of life improvements to InDev, which desperately needs them. Sneaking, crawling, and swimming were all implemented, making things much easier in terms of maneuverability. Pick block and flight in creative mode. Shift click in the inventory and crafting screens. Right click to equip. All the way down to things like a fancy painting GUI that allows you to select what painting you want before placing, and the front facing camera view, as well as fixing a bazillion bugs that were present in vanilla indev. One of the buggiest yet charming times in all of Minecraft. Oh, and I almost forgot, it has multiplayer support. Multiplayer in indev. What? Okay, woo. That was a lot told to you extremely fast. To sum it all up in a nicely wrapped package, I just really, really think you need to try InDev Plus for yourself. I could talk at you for hours and hours and it still wouldn't do it justice. I was absolutely mind blown checking this stuff out. I never thought clunky old InDev could become something so beautiful. And so rounding out the epic conclusion to an epic trilogy is, you guessed it, InfDev Plus. Obviously, InfDev Plus expands on the first version of Minecraft to ever feature near-infinite world generation we know and enjoy today, Minecraft InfDev. Now, like I said in the intro, InfDev Plus just came out and is in version 0.1 at the time of this video's release. 
There's not an insane amount released yet, like the first two trilogy installments, but I did get the blessing to test out the upcoming version 0.2, as well as some insider info from one of the developers on some extremely exciting and ambitious future plans, which we'll go over toward the end. Well, Classic Plus's theme is to create, expanding the creative capabilities of Minecraft Classic and really fitting into the theme of Minecraft's earliest builds, and well, InDev Plus's theme is to survive making survival more challenging and rewarding as you saw in the last section of the video. InfDev Plus takes a bit of a different approach. It works alongside Minecraft's new infinite generation and focuses on expanding exploration and incentivizing players to get out and explore the new terrain. Which is sweet because I remember when InfDev first came out and that's all people really did. Just explore the new world changes and see what new terrain would pop up just beyond the fog. In InfDev Plus's current early stage of version 0.1, it is beginning to shape up that way really nicely. Firstly and simply, the block height limit has been increased to 256, which was adapted into the terrain generator for some almost beta-like mountainous terrain generation. I mean, that alone makes it fun to explore. There are a few different world types currently in Default, which is a mod-enhanced version of InfDev terrain, super flat, Vanilla, which is the InfDev terrain we know and love, and Classic, which is kind of a combination of older terrain with infinite generation. It adds cows and chickens back into this version, similar to InDev Plus. And as for sheep, they spawn in many different colors, which wasn't a thing until way later versions of beta. There are tons of immersive options and features as well, such as improved graphic settings never seen in InfDev, tons of particle effects, cave music, and cave sounds, the famous fluff.png as the cloud texture, and beautiful sunsets. Now, 0.2 is coming soon, and may already be released by the time you're watching this. Like I said a minute ago, I was given the opportunity to test it out early, and it was amazing. This really shows the exploration-focused path the mod is taking. There are abandoned villages to find, and enhanced dungeons. Exploration-themed items added from later versions of Minecraft back into InfDev, like boats, maps, compasses. And unlike the first two mods, InfDev Plus will feature a fully functional sprint mechanic, using a stamina bar that allows for a 5 second sprint and then a 5 second cooldown before you can sprint again. Things go beyond just exploration though, as there is a big focus on expanding the very limited building capabilities we used to have in InfDev. InfDev Plus will add super cool decorative things like tables and chairs, windows, flower pots, stained glass, stripped logs, and path blocks. And that's not even close to all. A full roadmap can be found in the Legacy Plus Discord server with all the upcoming features. And in the future past version 0.2, there will be an insane amount of things coming up, like two brand new dimensions, which are inspired by the Nether and Aether, each with their own unique items, dungeons, and mobs. Biomes will also be added, also with extra new blocks and dungeons. So many cool things are coming, so again, please follow this mod if you're interested. There's a huge team working on it, and they are pumping out updates so insanely fast, so hold on to your pants. And if you didn't know this about me, InfDev was actually the first Minecraft version I ever played back in the day. So to see a team of mod developers taking the time to polish it and give it tons of love is very special to me. I just want to quickly summarize a few of the common themes throughout the three mods because I think it's cool to see some of the continuity through each. Firstly, each one has its own custom soundtrack, written by Golden Age modding community member and longtime friend of Legacy Plus, Soybean56, who composes his own insanely good music that's partially inspired by the work of Minecraft composer legend C418. I highly recommend checking out his stuff, you won't be disappointed. This is one of the only mods, let alone mod series, that features custom music, and the fact that it's done by someone within the Golden Age mod community makes it that much more special. There are decoration blocks and items that make it through each as well, like flowers and barrels. Each mod has world types to choose from that are tailored to fit the style of the mod that they're in, and really spices up the experience. As I mostly covered but want to bring up again as it's super important, an insane amount of quality of life improvements that we take for granted in modern Minecraft, such as shift click and sneaking, 
And lastly, the overall stylization, option screens, title screens, and GUI from each mod shines through every single one. That was a lot of mod coverage there, so if you enjoyed it, definitely check out Legacy Plus's Discord server in the description. Again, I can safely say there has never been, and will never be, a more extensive, polished, ironed out mod series for classic, in-dev, and inf-dev respectively. Like literally ever. This is peak old Minecraft modding, and something I never would have thought was possible for these older versions. Shout out to the developer team of the project for taking the ancient, dusty, old Minecraft versions and turning them into something amazing. This is like turning a rusted out 1930s Model A and turning it into a 2023 Ferrari. As for me, if you enjoyed this rendition of Golden Age mod coverage, let me know by leaving a like on the video and commenting your thoughts on it below with any other mods you think I should cover. Subscribe if you're brand new for a potentially endless nostalgic Minecraft experience on the channel. Be sure to join my Discord so you don't miss any video updates and can hang out and chat with me and other awesome people. And as always, special thanks to my channel members on these signs. Super special shout outs to my knights Crimson, Thomas Wellman Boyd, and Melon Siggy, and my beloved Lord members Fapichu, Tor Willem, and Dirty Dan. I love you all so, so very much. Have a cheat day today and eat that pizza and ice cream, and I'll see you in the next video.